Hi everyone, it's Kate here for a video on the books that I will be taking with me to the beach. Now, I usually don't get as much reading done at the beach as I was hoping, but I always like to bring lots of material in case for some reason I end up having just scads of time to read. And unfortunately, um, as I lay dying, which was so unbelievably amazing, has put me in a bit of a reading slump because it was so great. And um, yeah, I just, I'm kind of having trouble, but I am hopeful that if I find something that I like, I will be able to get out of that. So I have a whole range of types of books here for you too. And so the first is an author that you will not be surprised to see me holding in my hand, and that is another Ruth Rendell. So this is the next in the Inspector Wexford series. This is the 19th, and it's called The Babes in the Wood, and it starts out where there's lots of flooding happening in Kings Markham, which is where Inspector Wexford lives, and there are uh, a couple that went on vacation for the weekend and left their teenage children, two of them, with a friend of the mom. And when they come back, the friend and the children are gone, and they're missing, and they don't know where they went. So, um... It is really great, as always, with Ruth Rendell. I just absolutely love her reading, her writing. And uh, what I really love about this copy is it's very floppy, so that's nice. And I've just been dipping in and out of this on a, a Kindle copy on my phone, and I am about 75 pages into this. And so I definitely want to finish that over the week. Um, then another one, this is... a. Uh, very stereotypical, like, beach read. This is not heavy at all. And I don't know how many of you have watched The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, but I always really liked Emily Maynard, who was a contestant on The Bachelor, and then she was The Bachelorette, and ended up not marrying either of those guys, and is married now and has a kid with someone else that she met at home. And so this is just her memoir about being on The Bachelor. And like I said, really not challenging to read, but I really liked Emily, and so I really wanted to, oh, like, why did they break up? I, the nosy part of me wants to know why, Emily, and so it's called I Said Yes, My Story of Heartbreak, Redemption, and True Love. So I'm looking forward to reading this, and I'm about uh, 25 pages into this. So um, then another one I will be bringing up, bringing with me to keep up with is A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth. Now, A uh, Suitable Boy, I am slowly but surely making my way through it, and I can't believe we are bordering on finishing the second month of it, and I am about a week behind on this, actually, so I really want to get to reading this probably tonight. Actually, I'll do a fair amount of reading it, but it's awesome, and don't have much more to say about it, but it's awesome, and I never want it to end. Then I will be finishing up right at the beginning of the trip when we leave The Beekeeper's Apprentice by Lori R. King. I am doing this as a buddy read with several lovely booktubers, and so um, I was behind a day, and so I'm making up for that today, and I am not sure how I feel about this still. I don't want to say anything until I'm done. Uh, I think I could go either way. So I will let you know when I finish this what I think of it. And then um, an extremely uh, just beachy mystery that Kate from the novel Nomad and I are picking. She found this on Goodreads, and I was like, sign me up. It has a pun in the title, and it's called Woof at the Door. This is the first in a new series, guys, and it's by Laura Morrigan. So I just... This is my first time reading, like, this level of cozy that has a pun in the title. Like, maybe... I don't know, maybe Agatha Raisin is on that level, which I really enjoyed Agatha Raisin, so maybe I will enjoy this. I think I have to be, like, in a very specific frame of mind to read this kind of mystery, and I'm ready for it. So I'll just show you. It says, Animal behaviorist Grace Wild keeps her ability to psychically communicate with furry and feathered creatures under wraps. But when a Doberman turns out to be the only witness to a crime, Grace will have to let the cat out of the bag in order to catch a killer. So... Kate told me about it, and we just, like, we were doing a Google Hangout, and we couldn't help but laughing when she was talking about it. So that is a really light read that I'll do, and I think I'll be able to really zoom through it. It's not very long. The pages are small, so we shall see. Um, that's something I got from the library on a whim. I saw it on Instagram or Bookstagram, which I'm going to be doing a video about that in the future. I've just been having a lot of fun with that. And this is called The Painted Bridge by Wendy Wallace, and this is really, like, a, a thriller. Um, it's about a woman uh, 
who lives in a private asylum for genteel women of a delicate nature in the winter of 1859, and Anna Palmer has become its newest patient. To Anna's dismay, her new husband has declared her in need of treatment and brought her to this shabby asylum. Confused and angry, Anna is determined to prove her sanity, but with her husband and doctors unwilling to listen, her freedom will not be easily won. As the weeks pass, she finds other allies, a visiting physician who believes the new medium of photography may reveal the state of a patient's mind. And it's got a pretty long synopsis, but that gives you a general idea. So this is a um, just a thriller, and it's set in Victorian England. So I thought I might give it a try. I have a lot of books here, so I don't know what I'll get to, but I always love to have lots of options. And then I still, after reading As I Lay Dying, I realized like, I want the... Um, classics quotient to go up in my reading, but my thing is there's like lots of Dickens that I want to read, and those take a long time to read. So I'm really happy I put Chris, uh, Kristen Laverne's Satter on my summer TBR. So I still haven't gotten to this, this um, first one. Uh, uh, it's by Sigrid Unset, and the first volume is called The Wreath. This takes place, in case you didn't hear me say, in medieval Norway, and it's just basically, I think, kind of the story of this woman's life going into adulthood and then her marriage and having children, things like that. And it won the, um, the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1900, I'm pretty sure is the year, or maybe even before that. Um, oh, 1920. So I really would like to get to this, and we'll see if I do it. And the first volume, no, it's not very long, so it's manageable. And then I'm about halfway through All Creatures Great and Small. Um, if you have not yet joined my read-along, there is still time. I will post the link down below. And I've been doing a mixture of reading the physical book and doing the audiobook, and absolutely loving it. It's just so relaxing and heartwarming, and yes, it's great. So I hope if you are joining in the read-along that you are enjoying it. I haven't been that good about posting on the Goodreads group Um I've just been doing other things, but I hope everyone is enjoying it, and maybe in the future I'll be more active on the Goodreads group. Um, then another one that was on my summer TBR, which could be really fun to start, is The Bird in the Tree by Elizabeth Gouge, and um, this is a more modern classic, kind of Stella Gibbons, uh, Angela Thurkle era type author, and so it's just the story of the Elliot family, and uh, I think some of it takes place during World War II, and there's just, you know, it's about a family. It's a family saga. So I would like to get to this, you know, put more classics in my reading repertoire. And then one that I wanted to reread that I get, you know, I've gotten kind of nostalgic about this time because I reread it last year, and that's Ellen Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. This is one I just never get tired of, and so hopefully I'll find time for it in the next few weeks. It's just such an excellent book, and really, don't be skeptical about the writing in this, just because it's a children's book. Um, it's really excellent writing. Let's see. Then um, I ended up, unfortunately, DNFing the um, Shadow Rising, which was the fourth in the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. It just got really overwhelming. And it was that the rate of world building and info dumping was becoming greater than the rate of action that was happening in it. And so it's one thing if that's, oh, it's one, you know, thousand page book to get through. But I had, uh, let's see, I had 11 more, 10 more books to go. There was no way I was going to finish that series. So I just DNF'd it. <laughs> I, I can't handle that high of fantasy. So I bought this last year. This is the first in the Mistborn trilogy. Uh, by Brandon Sanderson, and it's just really popular in booktube, so that's why I bought it. And I got the UK edition, which the US fantasy covers are atrocious. Anyhow, I got this, and I'd really like to try it out. It seems like people really like it, and I do want to have like some good high fantasy in my life. It was just Wheel of Time was too much of a commitment. So I might try that. Depends on the mood I'm in. Uh, then I really want to start East of Eden, and I think I might... Uh, while I'm at the beach, this is very big. I might just uh, check out the Kindle copy for my library and hopefully make some progress on that because I've decided just this is a classic that I want to make time for this year. And then another buddy read I will be doing with uh, Kate from the novel Nomad is Murder at the Bright Well. Olive, if you are watching from a book, Olive, this is because of you. So my Booktuber Recommends project has kind of come to a halt, but there were 
some on the list that I was still really interested in, and this was one. And so I got Kate from the Novel Nomad to do a buddy read with me, and this just sounds extremely fun. And the blurb on it says, an elegant Christie-esque 1930s romp. And so it's just about um, uh, Amory Ames, a wealthy young woman who is married to a uh, kind of a jerk, and she ends up staying at the Brightwell, which is in... Um, it doesn't say where it is, but it's a it's a luxurious hotel. So just a really fun scenario for a murder mystery. And so I'm really looking forward to trying that out. Uh, then if the uh, mood strikes me, I might read some Jane Austen fan fiction. This is Jane Fairfax by Joan Aiken, who I didn't realize until the other day when my sister-in-law told me has written a bunch of children's fiction as well. So anyone who writes Jane Austen fan fiction and children's fiction is in my book someone I'm interested in looking into more. There's that. And then I have also started, and I am... I think 100, yeah, 145 pages into the weed that strings the hangman's bag. So you can see I'm kind of dipping in and out of a lot of books, so I just like to really kind of buckle down and finish some. Oh, and in case I didn't say it, this is by Alan Bradley. It's the second in the Flavia Deleuze series, and I am really enjoying it. I've been listening to the audiobook, which I really enjoy those. So I might do some more audiobook time with that. And then lastly, if for some reason I finished that Ruth Rendell and I just really can't live without reading another Ruth Rendell, I will be bringing along the 20th book in the Wexford series, which is End in Tears. And um, yeah, so those are all of the books I'll be bringing with me. I just always feel like I need lots of options with me. So hopefully I will just bust through a lot of these, get a lot of reading done, and just have lots of books to show from the week that I was away. Um, if you guys are going on vacation soon and you have your vacation reads, please comment down below because I'm nosy and I like to know what people like to read on vacation. I hope you enjoyed this and it wasn't too long and I will see you guys for another